program for you. Tag the classroom radio. Educative program. So we believe you will learn English, mathematics, general studies, full of knowledge. Come, let's have some fun. For the best reasons, we know and we believe in awesome pupils like you. And so this program Tag the Classroom in your home has been specially designed for you. A program that has been initiated by Lagos State Universal Basic Education Board, LASUBEB. It is to ensure that no child is left behind. And this edition is for lower primary classes. Let's introduce ourselves to you. Hello, amazing pupils. I am Antitino, your mathematics teacher. And today's mathematics class promises to be fun as usual. All right, my friends, I am Uncle Sheyi, your general studies teacher. And I believe you are ready for our general studies today, which will be what? Fun. Right, I am Aunt Lola. And I'll be taking you through English studies, which are called communication, communication class. Ellen Trow will bring you the, the classroom, classroom in your home. home. Please relax and let's learn. It's another beautiful day today, children. And how are you? I'm sure you're fine and you're keeping safe. You're welcome to our English studies class, which we call communication class. And as our usual practice, we look at something different and new. And today we'll be looking at legs and structure. What did I say, children? Legs and structure. But before we delve into that topic, I'm sure you all did your homework. Am I right? Some of you were able to submit yours and it is very commendable. And so let's get the correction done to that homework. Well, last lesson, uh, we talked about this topic on auxiliary verbs, right? Modal auxiliaries. And I told you to fill in these sentences with the correct option. Must, have to, or has to. Okay, so I'll just go straight to the answer in your homework books. You mark if you're correct and if not you put a star in front while you do what you put your answer in front so the first one i must be at school at 7 30. have you marked okay number two he has to take a bus if he wants to be early have you marked okay number three you must you must submit exercise books okay and the last one she will have to finish it before break time were you able to get all correctly four out of four or three out of four what is your answer oh whichever one you deserve to be celebrated awesome awesome and now we move to today's business but first what is our learning objective now by the end of today's lesson children you should be able to answer the questions correctly so what we'll be doing today is a little bit of brain teasers a little bit of brain work where i'll be giving you questions and options you'll pick the correct answer and of course we'll be doing it together children is that okay so let's move to the first um session which of the following does not belong to the group okay so let me read out the options to you and we pick the one that doesn't belong to that group spoon fork knife plate tape of course spoon fork knife plate we use them in the kitchen right they are utensils but tape is tape a utensil no, it is not, right? So I'm very sure the answer will be tape. Did you get it correctly? Yes, I said it. Okay, another one. Which of the following also does not belong to this group? Door, chair, house, table, drawer. Are you looking at it? Which is your answer? Okay, let's see. House, okay, door, chair, table, drawer, of course, they are inside the house, it is not the house itself, right? Good, they are equipment. Okay, let's move, let's move. 
Well, in this session, we will have to, we will be studying the paired words and then we will choose from the options lettered A to E, the one that is related to the fifth word in the same way as the first two pairs. Don't worry, let's look at the first one. I'm sure this uh, instruction will make sense. So we want to study the pair words and choose from the options the one that is related to the fifth one. What do I mean by the fifth one? Let's look at these children. We have game, we have tame. Hmm, it has same sound, right? Yes, and the only thing that is different is what is the first, le is the first letter, the first alphabet. Let's G, yeah, it's been changed to letter T, but it has what it has same sound, okay? The second bracket, we have gun and turn we have gun and turn and of course the first word is being changed there if you notice the last um three letters are, are the same right and so the only thing that is different is the first letter which means when we are choosing our answer what are we going to concentrate on children the first letter the first letter so let's look gray treat grown gross threats which is your answer, children? Did you choose treat? Yes, you're correct. Because from the, um, from the options we were given, we have what? We have the first letter being changed. And so when we are picking our answer, readily we should know that it is what? It is the first letter we are changing. Okay, I'm sure you, you were able to pick something from that session. I'm sure you, you do um, some, um, something relating to this um, topic in your classrooms. Am I correct? Yes, yes. And in this session, I want you to read the sentences carefully and decide how true they are. Okay, we move to the first one. Twins look alike. I'm sure you've heard that word twins before, right? What does it mean, children? Good. Two babies born at the same time from one mother. Is that, good? Is that okay, children? And do you know that we have identical twins and we have um, fraternal twins? Do you know? Identical twins, you cannot even differentiate either of them. You don't know which one is Kende and which is Tai. While fraternal twins are twins where, of course, you can easily pick this as Tai and this is Kende. Is that okay? So which is correct in this option from A to E? It is always true. It is often true. It is never true. It is impossible to know how true it is. None of the above. Which of those options do you think is correct? Okay, it is often true. It is often true doesn't mean it is always true. Is that okay, children? Okay. Okay, not children. I said complete the first word and that same letter you're choosing will begin the second word. Let's see. We have M in bracket ND and we have bracket E-A-G-L-E. -E. So which of those letters in the options do you think are fitting into those two words? Is it O, Mond, Ogul? Is there anything like that? No, right? Okay, let's look at the next one. You, mond, ha, hug. I can't even pronounce it, children, which means it doesn't make sense, right? We have C, um, E, mend, eagle. Could that be the answer? Okay, let's skip that. Let's look at the next one. We have um, T can't go because we can't even pronounce M, T, N, D, and taggle. No, okay. And the last one, mind and I, A, G, L, E is not. And in those options, which do you think really sit in well in those brackets? It is E, men and eagle, right? Yes. So if you come across that in your exams, your various school, you might just try to fit in those options, those letters in the options and see which one really goes well with it. Okay. Now in this session, we will study the examples and carefully work out what the given code is. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Okay, let's see. This is an example. And it, there is actually a pattern in this, in, this, in this work. Children, are you following? Okay. For the first one, I have O-C-E-M. 
And if you look at it properly, it's like I'm interchanging those words. What do I mean? I am bringing the second letter to the first. I'm bringing the first to the second. I am moving to the next segment. I am bringing the last letter here, okay? To the next one, I'm bringing this E to the front. It's like I'm bringing the, the second one to the first, the second one to the first. Is that okay? Now, C came first. O being the first came second. Are you with me, children? M, that is the last one, okay? Let's just say like the second one came back to the middle where E is and E went to its space. Is that okay, children? Now look at the next one again. So I, I arrived at com. Are you with me? Now let's look at the second example. I said the second one will come to the front and the first one will jump to the second. Is that okay, children? So let's interchange it. I have W, okay, A. Is that okay, children? I move to the next two. The next two letters. I have T followed. E came to the space of T and it's, it's, it's sitting right there and I have the last letter which is R and that is how I got water. Is that okay? And so picking this also, uh, the letter K comes to the space of E, E went to the space of K, K, E. The T, of course, is the same letter, so that's T, T. And of course, L jumped to the space of E and E went to the space of L and I was able to get Ketu. So it's a matter of picking it two, 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 two letters. You interchange them to their space, okay? These will come to this space. This one standing here will come to the other space. Is that okay, children? And that was how I was able to get that. While this also, M came first. E, the first one, came to the space of M. And the last one, T. And this one also, S came first, okay? K followed. And I picked this next two. I came to the space of P and P came to the space of I. Is that okay? And I got skip. Just a simple trick to it. You agree with me? Are you following children? Okay, let us look at these. What word does the code word A-M-E-D represent? Don't forget you pick the first two letters. You interchange them. You pick the next two letters. And you do what? And you interchange them. Is that okay? So look at the options. I have Dame. Mid, made, dim, hemmed. What is your answer, children? Okay, if M is coming first, A followed, D followed. Okay, I'm looking at the option. Then E. Oh, is it C? Yes, it is C. Made, made is the answer. And on this session, I will be filling the blank space with the correct option. Captain and crew, doctor and what? Okay, captain either in a ship or mostly in a ship, right? And the passengers they carry are called crew. Is that okay? While doctor, doctor takes care of who? Who children? You've gone to hospital before. Yes, and what are they called? What are the people, the patient, the, so, I said the answer, so sorry. What are the people, doctor treat, doctor treat, patient, they say my patient. So patient is the answer. It is not medicine, it is not bed, it is not sickness, it is not sleep. Okay, now we want to choose the one option that cannot be formed by an arrangement of some or all the letters of the word written in capital letters. Do not use any letter more often than it appears in the word written in capital letter. So we are looking at option that cannot be formed by an arrangement. Okay, it's looking big, Abby. Let's let's see. Let's see the um, let's see the questions in it. We have parasite. So which word um, in this option do you think we can't find? in this bigger word. Is that okay? And of course, we can't choose more than one letter. P-A-S-S, P-A-S, we don't have another S, right? R-A-T-E, R-A-T-E, okay, that is complete, so that is not something um, we can think as an option. S-T-A-R, S-T, 
T A R. Okay, we can find that too in that bigger word. S P I T E. Spite. S P I T E. Okay, we can find that too. Then P A T. P A T. We can also find that in that bigger word. So the option we can find in that bigger word is pass because we don't have two s we don't have s s we only have one s in that bigger word and pass is the answer i got it yippee okay we move to the next segment children which is let's formulate it what are we formulating today well it is a bigger word one two three four five six 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 11 letters, letter words, which is hospitality. What did I call it, children? Hospitality. And what I want you to do is to, is to write five smaller words from these bigger words. I will be back. Welcome back, children. How did it go? Interesting, right? You were able to form those words. Beautiful. And myself, I have penned down other words I found also in that bigger word. So let me show you. In that word, I can find hospita hospital. Okay, from hospitality, I can, I can pick hospital from it. Okay, I can also find L-I-P, leap in it. L-I-P, okay, I also got that. And P I T Pit, okay. P O S T P O S T, okay. And the last one, L A P Lap. Well, that are the words. Those are the words I could easily pick from that bigger word, hospitality. Yours might quite be different from what I wrote, but if you're sure that you, the letters you picked were from um, the bigger word, well, you deserve to be celebrated awesome awesome for coming this far with me for participating for giving me your hundred percent attention children you are awesome and i am so proud of you and that's how far we can go for today's lesson in our english studies class i'm sure you enjoyed every bit of the lesson i enjoyed myself also do not forget that today is a new day learn something new and where there is a will there is a way it is time for a mathematics class and it is with Antitino. I love you. You are welcome to today's mathematics class. When I say mathematics time, you say fun time. Mathematics time, fun time. And like always, today's mathematics class promises to be fun. I am Antitino, you know that already, and today I will be teaching prime numbers. Say that with me, prime numbers. But first of all, let's get correction to the previous homework. Find the common factors, 4 and 8, 5 and 10. Find the common factors of 4 and 8. How do we do that? We find the factors of 4. Factors of 4 are 1, 2, and 4. What are the factors of 8? Factors of 8 are 1, 2, 4, and 8. Remember, you can get factors from your multiplication table. So what are the common factors of 4 and 8? Common numbers 1, 2, and 4. So the common factors of 4 and 8 are 1, 2, and 4. I trust you got that question correctly. Good job, you. Find the common factors of 5 and 10. What are the factors of 5? The factors of 5 are 1 and 5. Yes, and the factors of 10 are 1, 2, 5, and 10. What are the common factors of 5 and 10? Common numbers that appears in 5 and also appears in 10. 1 and 5. So the common factors of 5 and 10 are 1 and 5. Did you get the two sums correctly? Good job you. Let us roll it up for ourselves. Roll it up, roll it up, 
roll it up and let it go. You are smart. Good job, you. Yes, it's Brain Busters time. Let's see what we have in our Brain Busters today. Solve the puzzle. Solve the puzzle. Can you solve this? Yes, solve this puzzle in 30 seconds and your time starts now. Okay, I'm back. So it's time up. Let's solve this puzzle. Yes, 10 plus 10 plus 10 gives 30. Yes, 10 plus 22 gives 32. So it means that the pigs are 16 and 16. 16 take away 5 gives 11. So now we know that the, the cat is 10. The pig is 16 and the goat or the horse is 5. So 10 plus 16 gives 26. 26 plus 5 gives 31. Yippee! Did you get that puzzle correctly? Hmm, you deserve an awesome chair. A, W, E, S, O, M. E, you are awesome, awesome, totally. Good job, you. Well done. Learning objectives. By the end of the lesson today, you should be able to identify prime numbers. What do you need to be able to identify prime numbers today? Your 100% attention and focus. Are you ready? Because I am ready. What are prime numbers? What are prime numbers? Prime numbers are whole numbers greater than one. Don't forget, whole numbers greater than one that have only two factors. Don't forget, greater than one having only two factors. Yes, that's one and itself. They, their factors are one and itself. Prime numbers are whole numbers greater than one. That means one is not a prime number. The number must be greater than one and it should have only two factors, one and itself. Prime numbers are divisible only by one and itself. Prime numbers are divisible only by one and itself. Antitinu, you mentioned something like that while teaching factors. Yes, I told you some factors have only two numbers, one and itself. So they are called prime numbers. A prime number cannot be divided by any other number without leaving a remainder. Do you understand me? A prime number cannot be divided by any other number without leaving a remainder. The only two numbers that can divide prime numbers are one and itself. Yes. An example of a prime number is seven. Let's see how seven is a prime number. It can only be divided without a remainder by one and seven. When you divide one by seven, when you divide seven by one, you get seven. And when you divide seven by seven, you get one. When you divide seven by any other number, you get a remainder. Let's see. Seven divided by one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's divide it by one. One, 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 two, one, three, one, four, one, five, one, six, one, seven. So seven divided by one gives us seven, which makes one a factor of seven, yes. So seven divided by two, 
one two three four five six seven one two one one two two one two three one what are we trying to get we are trying to establish the fact that no other number can divide seven without leaving a remainder now we've divided seven by two and we got three remainder one yes then the next one let's try three one two three four five six seven one two three one one two three two so seven divided by three gives two remainder one yes seven divided by four one two three four five six seven one two three four one one two three that's one remainder three yes then seven divided by five one two three four five Six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, one, one, two, seven divided by five, we have one remainder two, seven divided by six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, one, we have one remainder one, seven divided by seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, 7 divided by 7, 1. What did we do now? We, we, I showed you how we can divide 7 by numbers 1 to 7. And from here we can see that the only numbers that divided 7 without a remainder are 1 and 7. So prime numbers are numbers that can only be divided by 1 and itself. Are we together? Say together we are prime numbers from 1 to 30 let's try to get prime numbers from 1 to 30 more examples let's see more examples on prime numbers from 1 to 30 example 1 circle prime numbers in this series we have 1 to 10 how do we get prime numbers in this series Remember, 1 is not a prime number. So the next number we go to is 2. Let's see. Can any other number divide 2 apart from 1 and 2? No. Yes, so 2 is a prime number. Let's move to 3. 1, 2, 3. Let's divide 3 by 1. 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3. Yes, so 1 can divide 3. Let's try 2. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 1. We have remainder 1. So no other number apart from 1 and 3 can divide 3. When we divided 3 by 2, we got two, 1 remainder 1. So 3 is also a prime number. Let's see 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. You use all the numbers smaller than 4 to divide. 1 can divide 4 to get 4. 2 can also divide 4 to get 2. So 4 is not a prime number. So far, another number can divide the number which you are looking at. It's not a prime number. The only numbers that should divide a prime number are 1 and itself. Now, the next number is 5. So let's see if 4, 3, 2, and 1 can divide 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5. That means 1 can divide 5. Let's see 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 1, 1, 2, 2, 1. 2 cannot divide 5 without leaving a remainder. So that is established. Let's go to 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 1, 1, 2. It means that 3 cannot divide 5. Let's see if 4 can divide 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. 1. 4 cannot divide 5, which means 5 is a prime number. Because the only numbers that divided 5 are 1 and 5. So that makes 5 a prime number too. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 1. 1, 2, 2. 1, 2, 3 remainder 1. Let's try 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 1. 1, 2, 3, 2, 1. That means 3 cannot divide 7. Let's try 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. 
one, two, three. Four cannot divide seven without leaving a remainder. So the only numbers that can divide seven are one and seven. That makes seven a prime number. Two, we divide 10 five times. So 10 is not a prime number. Now let's see the prime numbers. Two, yes. Three, five, seven. So in this series, between one to 10, between one, number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, we have only four prime numbers. Two, three, five, and seven. What do we mean by prime numbers? Numbers that can only be divided by one and itself. And I counted for you. We did the counting together. We saw that it is only one and two that can divide two. Only one and three that can divide three. Only one and five can divide five. And only one and seven can divide seven. Example two, yes. Circle prime numbers between 1 and 20. Yes. Let's see. We already know that 10 is not a prime number. Yes. Remember that no other number should divide prime numbers without a remainder. Yes. It can only be divided by itself and 1. And these numbers I've been calling 10, 12, 14, 15, 16, 18, and 20. They can be divided by another number without remainder. So what are the prime numbers in this series? Let's see. 11, 13, 17, and 19. So between 10 and 20, we have 11, 13, 17, and 19. Are we together? Say together we are. Now do these. Now do this. How well have you been following today's lesson? Prime numbers that are numbers that can only be divided by one and itself without a remainder. Yes. How well did you understand today's lesson? Because it's evaluation time is assessment time. It's assessment time is time to prove yourself. Circle the prime numbers between one and 20. Circle the prime numbers between 1 and 20 in one minute and your time starts now. Okay, pens down. It's one minute and it's time up. Let's see. Yes, you first of all write the numbers 1 to 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Now let's circle the prime numbers. One is not a prime number. Yes. 2 is a prime number because it can only be divided by 1 and itself. 3 is a prime number because 2 cannot divide 3. And 1 and 3 are the only numbers that can divide 3. 4 is not a prime number because 2 can divide 4. 5 is a prime number because no other number can divide it except 1 and itself. 6 is not a prime number because 2 times 3 is 6. Yes, so 2 and 3 can divide 6. 7 is a prime number. 8 is not a prime number because 2 times 4 is 8. That means 2 and 4 can divide 8. 
9 is not a prime number because 3 can divide 9. 3 times 3 is 9. Yes. 10 is not a prime number because 2 times 5 is 10. That means 2 and 5 can divide 10. 11 is a prime number because no other number apart from 1 and itself can divide 11. 12 is a prime number because 2 times 6 is 12 and 4 times 3 is 12. So 2, 6, 4 and 3 can divide 12. 13 is a prime number. 14 is not a prime number because 2 times 7 is 14. That means 2 and 7 can divide 14. 15 is not a prime number because 3 times 5 is 15. That means 3 and 5 can divide 15. 16 is not a prime number because 2 times 8 is 16. And 4 times 4 is 16. So 2, 4, 8 can divide 16. 17 is a prime number. 18 is not a prime number because 3 times 6 is 18 and 2 times 9 is 18. So 2, 3, 6 and 9 can divide 18. 19 is a prime number. So the prime numbers between 1 and 20 are 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17 and 19. Yes, okay, let's celebrate ourselves before moving on. Did you get that sum correctly? Mm, I'm sure you did. Now let's celebrate ourselves with a great cheer. G-R-E-A-T. Wow, you have done a great job. Well done. Good job, you. Good job, you. Assignment. Don't forget that you must do Antitinu's homework. Don't just do it and keep it with you at home. Do it and submit it on the WhatsApp number we always call at the end of the lesson every time. And you don't know, you might be winning yourself some goodie packs. Yeah. You might be winning for yourself some goodie packs. Assignment, write down prime numbers between 1 and 30 in 20 seconds and your time starts now. Okay, okay, I'm sure you have captured your homework now. And that is it for today. We have come to the end of another awesome yet educative mathematics time. But don't go away, because Uncle Shea is here for another awesome time with you in general studies class. So I come your way next lesson, remember? Auntie Tinu loves you, and from me, it's bye-bye. Hello, wonderful pupils. How are you today? I'm glad to see you today. High five. Good to be here. I am your teacher, Uncle Sheyi. You're welcome to another exciting segment of the program, The Classroom in Your Home. And today, we will be looking at respect in our civic education class. But before we go ahead with today's class, let's quickly have correction to the previous homework that you were given. In our last class, I asked you to mention the names of the Senate President and the Speaker of the House of Representatives. Of course, Ahmed Lawan is the Senate President currently, and Femi Bajabi Amila is the Speaker of the House of Representatives. And I'm sure you are correct and you deserve the gaggle wiggle dance. Well done. All right, let's move on to today's class. And by the end of the lesson, you should be able to explain the term respect and also to mention two people to be respected. You should be able to explain the term respect and mention two people to be respected. Okay, what is respect? My friends, do you respect your parents? Do you respect your teachers? Do you respect your friends? Do you respect your neighbors? Okay, that is begging for answer. Please let's look at the definition of respect. Respect means showing honor to whom it is due. Showing honor to whom it is due. And if you track the screen, you will see a good picture of two men showing respect to 
each other. Okay? Respect is a way of showing that we are cultured and well trained. Okay? It's a sign when you respect people, it's a sign that you have imbibed good home training and that you are cultured. All right, and if you look at our various cultures, if you look at the Western cultures, if you look at our traditional culture, you will see that respect is part of every culture. Every culture um, encourages people to, to, to respect one another, to respect themselves also. It is dishonorable to be disrespectful. It is not good to be disrespectful. It is a dishonor, all right? Okay. A brilliant child, I'm sure you all are brilliant, who is disrespectful, won't be honored by people. Yes, it is not enough for you to be brilliant in school, but with your brilliance, you must imbibe the character of what? Respect. You must respect everyone. You must respect your younger ones. You must respect your friends. And you should respect everyone that what? That is around you. Now, how do we show respect? How do you respect your neighbors? How do you respect your teachers? How do you respect your friends? How do you respect everyone around you? How do you respect people that even disagree with your own opinion? All right, how do we show respect? By greeting your friends, your elderly ones, parents, teachers, your friends, and so others, so, so on. Okay, if you look at this picture on the screen, you would see a man prostrating for people around him. And who is this man? Can you tell me who this man is? Look at the screen very well. Yes, that is Anthony Joshua, the, what, the person holding the heavyweight um, title. He is a world champion in boxing, okay? Anthony Joshua. And even though he is a big man, he is a mighty man, respected by the whole world, you can see him prostrating for the president of Nigeria, for the ministers and the world and the aides of the president. He's showing respect, even though he is a man that is respected internationally by the world. Okay, so we should what? Imbibe the character of respect and greeting, prostrating for men and kneeling down for boys. Um, kneeling down by, for girl and by girls is a sign of respect, the boys prostrate while girls kneel down. Okay, all right. What is another way of showing respect by tolerating other people's religion and opinion? And if you track the screen, you will see the Sultan of Sokoto and the bishop taking pictures together, exchanging pleasantries. Okay, even though they are men of different religion, they respect each other's opinion and religion, okay? So if you have people in your class that are not of the same religion, that are not of the same opinion, that are not of the same state or the same tribe, you need to what? Respect their opinion and respect their religion. Respect the state they are from, okay? All right, let's go to another one. By doing your homework, okay? You show respect to your teachers, you show respect to your school, and you show respect even to yourself by what? Doing your homework, all right? I know some of you don't like doing your homework, but you are showing respect by doing your homework. So are you promising me that you would be doing your homework? Very good, very good. I like that. Well done. All right. Another way you can show respect is by not fighting. It is not good to fight. Okay? It is not good to fight. Or by making noise in the classroom. You don't need to make noise in the classroom. You should respect yourself. You should respect the school. You should respect the class captain. And you should respect the teacher. So don't fight or make noise in the classroom. Well done, my friends. Another way you can show respect is by not taking what does not belong to you. Don't pick up anything in the class at home or anywhere that does not what belong to you. Don't pick the pen that is not yours. Don't pick the book that is not yours. Don't go home with another person's sandal. Okay? Don't pick whatever that does not belong to you. And if you do that, 
you are someone that is showing respect okay another way by which you can show respect is by helping others to be better by helping others to be better in your class if your friends don't understand some of the topics you can help them by explaining to them if you are well grounded in such topics okay all right you can help your friends you know do some things in the class you can help your younger ones at home help them with their homework i'm not saying you should do it for them but you can guide them to do the right thing okay so always help others and by doing so you are showing respect all right so treat people the way you want to be treated Poopies, can you take that with me? Treat people, yes, the way you want to be treated, okay? Treat people the way you want to be treated. And also talk to people the way you want to be talked to. Don't shout at people. Don't talk people down, okay? Even if you are in primary six, don't talk down on people that are in primary two, okay? Don't shout at them. Don't talk them down. The way you want to be talked to, please talk to them also and why it is because respect is earned and not given okay respect is earned and not given and respect is reciprocal do you understand that statement pupils it means that once you show respect to people people will also show you respect respect is reciprocal okay all right i'm sure you've been listening and you are ready for my questions. Are you ready for Uncle Shee's questions? All right, I'm also ready to give you the questions. So you can open your books, can number your book from one to five. All right, put evaluation on top of it. And you do not need to write the questions. I will be reading the questions out for you. All you just need to do is to put down the correct answer. I will be waiting for you and I'll be giving you some few seconds to do that, okay? So can we start? Have you number your from one to five? All right, let's start. I need to respect my younger ones. Is it true or false? Please put that down. I need to respect my younger ones. Okay, on to the next question. When you respect others, they will disrespect you. Is that yes or no? Quickly. When you disrespect others, they will disrespect. When you respect others, they will disrespect you. Yes or no? Number three, a brilliant child does not need to respect others in class. Yes or no? A brilliant child does not need to respect others in the class. Number four, a Christian doesn't need to respect Muslims. A Christian doesn't need to respect Muslims. Yes or no? And the last question, everyone deserves respect. Everyone deserves respect, true or false. All right, I'll be giving you five seconds to round up to check if you have put down the correct thing, to check if they are correctly spelled. Please check your work. Okay, check, 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 check. All right, and your time is up. So stop writing. Don't drop your pen, just stop writing because you will be needing the pen to tick. Now, I will give you the correct answers to these questions, okay? Number one, I need to respect my younger ones. True. You need to respect everyone, younger ones, elderly ones. Everyone deserves to be respected. Number two, when you respect others, they will disrespect you. No, because respect is reciprocal. When you show respect to people, you will also receive respect from them. Number three, a brilliant child does not need to respect others in the class. No, a brilliant child needs to respect everyone in the class. Number four, a Christian does not need to respect Muslims. No, a Christian needs to respect Muslims, traditional worshippers, Buddhists, and every other person that is practicing any form of religion. You need to respect them. And the last question, everyone deserves respect, true or false? True. Everyone deserves respect. All right, did you get five out of five, four out of five? 
Three out of five. You deserve the parapanda chair. Parapanda. Parapanda. Senorita. Well done, my friends. Okay. Now put down these assignments. Mention two ways of showing respect. Mention two ways of showing respect. And that is your assignment. Okay. To our favorite segment of the program. Did you know? 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 Do you know? Are you excited? I am. All right, let's have our question. You can find bees everywhere in the world except dash. Hmm. So where can we not find bees? Is there anywhere we cannot find bees? Do you know it? Please put down your answer if you do. Quickly. Oh, you know, you know the answer to the question. Please put it down. Put it down. Quickly, quickly. We can find bees everywhere in the world except all right, have you done that? Have you put down your answer? Okay. You cannot find bees in Antarctica. Where is Antarctica? Antarctica. Oh, one of the continents in the world. Okay. You know, Africa, Europe. Yes, Antarctica is one of the continents. And why? Because there are no flowering plants there. Okay. You know, bees need insects pollinated flowering plants so that they can feed on such plants okay but in antarctica you cannot find flowering plants there okay and because there are no flowering plants plants there bees cannot be found there all right you've learned something new today and that is it for today you have learned that we should respect each other we should respect one another you should respect people in the school people at home your younger ones your teachers and every other person you have also learned that you should do your homework. You've also learned that bees cannot be found in Antarctica. I had a great time teaching you today, and I'm sure you also had a good time with me. All right, until next time that I will be seeing you again, Uncle Sherry says, be good. Ciao, ciao. Awesome. Yeah. You will agree with us that today's lesson was interesting, educative, and at the same time fun-filled. Uncle Sheyi, what's your take on it? Auntie Tinu, I totally agree with you. Today's class has been awesome. In fact, we should give kudos to our pupils for giving us their rapt attention. We say, good, good job, job you. you. Auntie Lola. Yes, and there is a YouTube channel you can go to Paraventure you miss any of the episodes. For your missed episode for this current episode please visit lagos suburb youtube channel i repeat lagos suburb youtube, YouTube channel. channel don't forget to send in your comments homework and questions to the number showing on the screen the number is 081 5086563 sms and whatsapp messages only do not call we repeat do, do not, not call, call. Remember, at last suburb, we leave no child behind. behind.